All right, good morning, everyone. We'll just wait one more minute and then we'll get started. All right, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so today we're gonna do a usual morning stand-up with uh, Prosper is gonna be running a slightly um, different session in the middle of it. But as people are joining, I'm just gonna start off with the regular announcements. Um, so what's happening? So well, first, good morning, I hope everyone is good. Um, one of the reasons that we've added in the session from Prosper is there's a sense that people are starting to get tired and there's a little bit of frustration creeping in. And so we recognize that, we acknowledge that um, what we're asking people to do, there's a lot of work that's happening. There's a lot of learning that's happening. And that learning is probably, um, that learning can be difficult, that learning can be frustrating. And to learn and to try and to try and figure things out may be a frustrating process. So just to acknowledge um, that there, we understand that people are getting tired, there may be a bit of frustration, people are juggling different things, but that's all normal. And we expected that this would be part of the process. And I think, and I think the rest of the team as well, thinks that everyone is doing um, very, very well. And I would say exceeding at least my expectations. And Yevabel has been very vocal about that on chat as well. Yevabel, what do you think? I think you're on. I'm muted. Yeah, I'm absolutely. I mean, I think there's there's um, nothing about that. I think it's it's challenging. It's quite uh, frustrating sometimes because you want to do and you want to get more because there, there seems to be like abundant knowledge here. But you can only absorb a little bit of that, and you feel like kind of. I mean, ang probably the anxiety and the kind of like desire to get as much as you can, but it's kind of you can't, but that's natural. But I, what I can tell you is that from the questions I see, I usually just check the kind of questions, the quality, and the kind of like the understanding level that has been uh, increasing. You probably won't notice it because you are inside, but for me at least I can see it, and it's really incredible. It's it's kind of, that's one of the reasons why it gives some energy, that this thing is working. And of course we don't want to break it to a point where like, you, know, you you can't just anymore go, and that's why we will do everything that's possible, and all of the tutors trying to be there to kind of help you understand and bend and do whatever you know. Prosper is there to kind of make you cheer, and so it's important that you do that such that you don't get to your you know critical point where you kind of like okay I'm, I'm you know kind of it's impossible or I can't go. So just don't reach there, but asymptotically get closer. <laughs> is that you really get further like and by the end you kind of get transformed and if you need any confirmation how much you're doing just ask i can tell you how really good you are doing i can point out like you know some of the things that i noticed and we we, we plan to do that like individually we, we have to have at least a call but yeah i think i second that room. this is incredible for not only you but for us because this kind of proves our point that you know, just talented people, if they get the opportunity and the kind of the community, you know, they kind of can really uh, surprise you. Not 10 times, I think someone, someone said 120 times a week, right? Something like that. But it's like, I, yeah, that's my, my understanding. Great. Okay. And so just building on that, so we have, um, we now have a, a tutoring team of three. Mustafa is still having connection issues, but you have um, access to different, you have Usman, you have Abla, you have Sebastian, and in addition to both Jean and Yababel, and Yababel who are here to answer questions. And so it's um, it was great to see the discussion as part of the, um, the Slack group this morning, but please, um, this is the sort of flipped classroom approach where the challenge has been presented. And if we're not getting, I'm just going to move, there's some construction here. If people are not asking questions, then it's hard for us to know how people are doing. 
So absolutely, you should be asking lots of questions. You should be pushing the tutors to answer questions. If you're not clear, ask again. So we have a full-time team of tutors plus more um, who are here to answer your questions. So please, um, asking all of the groups, all eight groups, to add um, the tutors to their Slack groups and make sure that you're carrying them with you because this is a resource that you have available to you. So please make full use of the tutoring resources that you have. Yeah. Um, tonight, there's a talk tonight from Axel. So Axel is somebody who's doing um, research. He's using data science in an applied way. And so Axel, uh, Yavabel and I both know him. He's a, he's very, I think today he's going to give a very introductory level talk. But um, so it should be accessible to everyone. But pay close attention to what he's saying and really think about some of the applications and how he's applying things. And I think that some of the data that he's going to present will be seeing later on. He will be seeing later on as well. But it should be it should be very interesting and be ready to and feel free to ask questions. Axel's originally from Cameroon. He's now um, a research shareholder here in Germany. And he has a large research group that's working on um, I guess they're using data. I he'll, he'll explain what he's doing better than I can. Um, you have a bell, anything from your side before we hand over to Prosper? Prosper has a interesting idea um, for the next, before we get into the regular standup. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, just I would say I'm, I'm trying to answer some of the questions, but ask and let us know. At least yesterday was quite, hopefully it's because you are reading the paper and you're trying to digest it. But, uh, if you are just quiet because you don't understand it, that's not a good way. So just ask. That's the, another repeating the same thing. Go uh, Prosper or um. All right. Prosper? Hi, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great. So I'm, I'm really excited to actually get us going with our punch section and then nuggets. We know it's frustration, but we want it to be fun. So it's frustration and nuggets. So this, to begin with, frustration has always been with us. I mean, either you are working or you started something that you feel you can really complete on time. You really get disturbed. You don't know how you can go about it. I mean, there's a feeling of being upset, annoyed, as a result of being unable to change or like achieve something. And at this moment, our goal is to understand what we are learning as data scientists and also take on the challenge. And the challenge could, could be so much of a work because we believe that at this level, you should have some skills that really would make it very easy for you to be on the job and get things done. I mean, I remember there was a time that I was supposed to have finished a tax on time. I haven't finished and I didn't eat. I think most of you also have that feeling that you wouldn't be able to eat. But this is it. If frustration sets in, I, this is one of the first things you should do. I'll share that uh, with us. It's just like a, a small quiz for you to take, which is really fun. It's okay to be frustrated about not being able to get this work done. It's really okay. It's okay not to even get your tax done to 100%. It's okay. But what I would encourage you to do is that just step back. So today's first nugget is step back. Just take a step back. Try and do what you can do and take a step back. Take a step back means that just get off your laptop for at least 10 or 20 minutes, go watch a video or just, just eat something, your favorite dish, and then relax. Just relax that everything will be fine. This is just me trying to cope with workload as, as a data scientist, and this is totally fine. Don't burn yourself out. So today's first nugget is take a step back from your PC, take a step back from your phone and listen to something that would really take your mind away briefly for 10 or 15 minutes and get back. Know that frustration is part of life. Know that you go through it. But one thing you need to understand is don't let it take you away from your goal. It would be so bad that at the end of the day, whatever you're doing, you realize that frustration, as a result of frustration, you are unable to get things done. So the first nugget for today is take a step back. And this frustration tolerance seems to, I mean, serve as a pivot to our challenge. So have a bit of a tolerance for it, like we have in every system. You don't have 100% efficiency. So in as much as you expect to get things done and be excited about it, at least have 10% tolerance for frustration that, hey, I could get frustrated right now. 
So I shouldn't really think of getting it 100%. Even if you are the best of best, remember that frustration is certain. And look at frustration in two angles. Let it be a, a pivot for you to try to do something you haven't thought about. Don't see it in a bad light. See it in a good light. Let it be a fun thing. So frustration should be a fun thing for you. See it in a good light to, to pivot, to, to get things done that you haven't thought about. So remember, first nugget for today is take a step back, go and watch something, relax, listen to some joke, just understand that you need to get this done. Frustration is not supposed to take you away from getting it done. So I'll share that uh, small exercise with us on, on, on random so then we can all answer in the fun way and at the end of the day you see that you're really making progress and like Arun and my other team members said reach out to anyone irrespective of um, whichever department they are just reach out to them and then we'll be ready to help you out i'm here with you guys and i wish us a very good day today over to you Arun. super all right thanks prosper so i just i've put a couple of notes from what prosper said and into the ideas channel but thank you prosper for your positivity and giving us helping us to reset um yeah all right who wants to speak uh how are we doing what are we working on so what are we working on today what did we get done what are we working on today and any blockers <laughs> lowell thank you for being first again <laughs> um, otherwise i would wonder where i was one day somebody has a <laughs> Elvis, you okay. gotta be a little bit faster tomorrow. <laughs> so Lawan is selecting Hello. people. <laughs> it's like, I think it has, it has automated the process. It's yeah, <laughs> I like, I like your activity. <laughs> All right. So yeah, All right, Yeah. All right. Yeah, I hope you can all hear me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so. So, well, yesterday I tried to familiarize myself with the materials, the actual paper, I try reading it because I want to get an overview of okay, why the research. Because when the when the PI for the work was speaking during the session he had yesterday, I didn't understand most of the thing he was saying. But I knew that okay, once I read the paper and maybe go back to the YouTube video that will be uploaded, maybe I'll understand better. So I had to read the paper like twice. And I think I got an overview of okay, why the research was being carried out, even though I still have some difficulties understanding the technical details of the work. Or so some of the probability class we had with, some part of the probability class we had with Yalgao yesterday also, also obtained understanding some part of the technical details of the work as well. So I read some other, the, I think there are three files for the work. There is this model and method file and the other supplementary. So those ones are too much technical for me. So I, I think I have an overview of okay, what's the, what is it was now, and I can go on to okay, answer the questions that are, that are asked for maybe tax 1.1 and 1.2. And if I need any help, I can just refer to this that channel. So now the problem I have now is okay, actually now understanding the Python code, maybe whether I will go through the repository the group created, or maybe I will use the COVID 19 file we used during the pre assessment stage. So that's something I will try to figure out today, but then. A little positive about being able to do it. So yeah, and thank you, Prosper, for the advice. It's really helpful. I think I'll try that too. So yeah, that's just about it for me. I just want to underline one point, just from a, a um, the way it, the group, the work is organized. Please keep in mind that the code is to be done in groups, or it can be done in groups. So you don't need to do all of the code understanding yourself. Okay. Right. Oh, and I had a, a meeting with my group. Timid yesterday, we tried to respond together on the tax 1.1 and 1.2, so it was really interesting. Okay, so, yeah, thank great. You. Uh, Elvis, yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Morning, morning, yes, uh, uh, uh I have done some bit of the challenge, and uh, one way that I, I I took into looking into the challenges. Uh, yesterday, I emptied myself of the, the 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 ideas I had about data science that you need to code a little bit. You need to you need to get into Jupyter notebook. So I I emptied myself of those beliefs and went into the challenge as as I want to learn. So I went into the challenge, researched about um, the paper, the models, and uh, 
really I did much of the reading than even I have not touched my notebook. So I got the concept about the the challenge and actually I've been able to answer the the task 1.1 questions. And today I have from the morning I have been looking into task 1.2 of now being able to apply the concepts that I got into the uh, scenario case that we are we are we were given in task 1.2. And what I want to do today is uh is also to be able to look into the court part with my group. Uh, after this, we are having a meeting where we see the checkpoints that we put in place in yesterday's meeting and also continue to into going into the court part. Yeah, that's what I've done. Great. I think that's very nice. Okay, Binyam, I think Binyam is raising his hand. Uh, good morning, guys. Um, so I'm talking on behalf of uh, Team Ethiopia. Uh, so we, we're doing good. Uh, it was harder yesterday, it got easier today. Uh, we read the research paper and uh, some of the references that, that you gave us. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, all of us at least have some foundation to answer questions uh, from task one for the interim submission. Uh, and some some basic understanding of the Bayesian uh, inference and other models that we're going to use to do the actual modeling for Ethiopia's COVID cases. Um, so as I read the research paper, um, at first it was very intimidating. It was like nine pages long and full of texts. But then as I dug in, I've, I've come to appreciate the ways they used the methods uh, and the techniques they used and uh, how important it is for a specific country to know what the interventions uh, affected how the COVID-19 is progressing. So um, one thing I want to request is um, we're fine with the interim submission. I think uh, we can complete it complete it with what we have. But for the final submission, we're going to need a lot of tutorial. Tutorials like uh, yesterday's probability tutorial. Um, so yesterday's tutorial was very different. It was very, um, we were very engaged. Uh, we were asking questions, answering questions. So we're going to need a lot more of them. Uh, so that's, that's what I have to say. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I think we definitely try to address as much as we can. It's it's a short week, but yeah. Um, and also on the code on Wednesday, there will be just a kind of startup um, session. Just I'll try to just hold like for 30 minutes, just going through the code. But so I, I think it's good if you go through it and have a question. But I just wanted to underline the point I made at the start. If you have questions, then ask. So if there's areas in which you feel you need a tutorial, write it down right now, and that'll help us organize. Exactly. Yeah. So yes. take take this as we are your resources. You have Yababel, you have Jean, you have Abla, you have Usman, you have Sebastian, you have Mustafa. You have people who are here to help you. So And you have time, and you have a group. So reach out. This is a little bit like, again, we go back to this idea of work. If you're given a task and you, um, it's not, your manager may not necessarily know what you are or not able to do. And so please use the Slack group. I see a message here from um, Tijen Sunimi. I find it hard to answer research papers, so ask for a little bit of help. But I just want to add to that, be, be specific. So Tijen Sunimi, please turn your microphone on. How could we help you? So we can't make you understand research papers. We can't force you to try and understand. How can we help you? OK, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, OK. I, I've like tried to read it just. And if the, the major research paper, the one on inferring points, what I find personally from papers is that they're not interesting to read. They're not, they tend to, yeah, I don't find them interesting. <laughs> And like <laughs> they tend to, you know, like I've read some textbooks that I know that this ones are, in, but this ones are, I don't know, they're not interesting. And they tend to have a lot of grammars, like they tend to have a lot of like 
big big things to understand you have to be going on google so i don't know like how can i understand like research papers so i don't know I don't, and like when i'm here everybody's saying that okay they're having a point like they are read like me is saying that lawal is saying that i'm like how are they actually understanding papers that because they, 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 they just, just put out, they don't try to write it in a way that it's simple for other people to get that's my own like i i don't know I think I think it's 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 quite a really honest uh, way, and I like it. And it's not. I think yesterday Mariela was saying, even as a PhD student, sometimes you will just be given, and you're like, no way, and I, you know, you can't understand it. And some are actually this paper by far is the most understandable compared to others, right? So it's like at least that's why I dare to give it to you. And the way that I would say the first thing is that it's, it's, you don't have to read everything. You know, not everything is re written to be completely read. Of course, when you want something specifically, you, it's, it's like you will go and get it. So I would say first, the very first way I would understand a paper is just skim through titles, you know, how it's organized in such a way that the, the abstract kind of tells you what they want to do. So the first thing is that, do you understand what they want to do? That's the first thing you have to do. If you don't know that, it's kind of so hard. If you can't understand the abstract, go to the introduction to, to get that aspect, because in the introduction, they motivate it. Usually, the way it's written is that the abstract kind of summarizes everything, the motivation and the result and everything else. And then the introduction kind of would give you, OK, I know that Arun has to leave at uh, 10.55. So Arun, if you want to say before that anything, I would just give you a chance and you can go. No, nothing else from my side. You know what, it's great that you're asking questions. I'm glad we're getting honest because as we get harder, it is going to, as we get further, it is going to get harder. And so we all need to come up with techniques. I'm just going to tell the last story, then I have to go. So I was taking part in a sporting event and I asked once and people laughed at me and it was actually, they didn't get my question. I was, I said, what do I do when I get tired when I was, I was rowing at, at this point? And my question was not, of course you get tired and everyone's like, no, just be a, just be a man and push through. My question was, how do you deal with the challenge and the challenge of your body gets tired and you want to have good form and you don't want to lose the race. And so I think the question is really good. How do you approach something that you actually don't even know how to start with? So what I would say is you've asked the question and it's very good because I think you've said something that other people have already um, are feeling and you've already gotten some answers. So reach out and try and break it into the simplest question that I think you can understand, but don't give up. I do need to run, but you, the last thing I'll say is that you have so much support. It would be great to see that lots and lots of people are busy. You have full-time tutors plus the whole team. So there's really, if the tutors run out of time, then I think your question is answered, but we won't run out of time and energy to help you. So don't stop asking. Great. I think, so Arun, you can go. So just- yeah. uh, Okay, thanks everyone. I'm, have a good day. We'll see you in a bit. And Stephanie really said one thing that I was about to say. So and I need to get and get my power. But Stephanie, can you just elaborate what you're saying? Because that's the way that I would also like to approach it. And it's kind of, I would say that's a good strategy. So can you elaborate your, your, your thing? And in the meantime, I go and, and get uh, my power cable. Hi, everyone. Hey, just go uh, on and I'm, I'm just, I'll come back in one yeah. second. Okay, so, so for me, when I'm reading every research paper, uh, even for the one that we did for Twitter analysis, which was the million follower fallacy, I just open my Word document and then I, I go through pattern, through every part. So for every part, whatever I understand, I just write like some few points to like, so that I can review afterwards and get the whole picture of the whole paper. So. That's what I do. I break it into parts and then summarize for each of the findings that I get. So I don't just read the whole paper at once. I just break it into parts. So, yeah. I, I missed uh, your statement, but I, I think just from the text that um, I see, it's exactly the way you should approach it in a way like get the, the you know, it's kind of a hierarchy, form a hierarchy. The first thing is that do you do you kind of know where they are, like, you know, in which kind of class they are, you know? So it's, it's a very higher hierarchy. So that means 
now we describe it the project so that the paper is really in that area right so they kind of do something about modeling something about model selection change points blah blah so that's kind of clear and then and then you want to say like what you really want to get is how did they do it what is their approach right so what what is it the, so what is the second step would be like okay what are the critical things i need to understand you know, so it's kind of they have the results but they have the method so what i want to understand is the method so you, you just go to that particular part, and if you don't understand that part, you go up, and you kind of try to reach the introduction aspect, and there, you know, whatever, they, you know, there is a part which is very easy to read, there is a part which is difficult to read. So when you, when you are in the difficult part, just go to the easy part, and kind of look at like, okay, well, you know, but don't try to like, it's not, it's not like a fiction, it's not written one by one like as, or a blog, not written like that. It's written with sections, and this is a scientific paper. All scientific papers, they need to have like this kind of section: abstract, introduction. Introduction. The main idea of an introduction is it motivates. The first part of an introduction is motivating, so that means it kind of gives a context why this thing is why the what they do is important and why it should be published. Because you know the journals needs to know why this is relevant. So the first part of usually the, the introduction is kind of motivating in how that paper relates to other papers to the community. And the second part is kind of like outlining how their paper or their method compares with whatever is existing. And then they go into meters. Meters basically they say like, okay, you know, like it could be literature review, it's kind of like, oh, other, these people did that, that people did that, these people did that kind of way. You know, kind of, it just kind of gives you how they fit it within the community. And then they go specific to their method, what they used, the data they used, the algorithm they used, blah, blah. So if you want to understand how the algorithm, you could go just to that section only. But if that part is not understandable, you have to go and read somewhere else in the Google or whatever. So it's like that. You can't understand just the paper doesn't contain enough information to give you everything. So the, I hope that will help you. Um, but it's, and I will not say you will understand it tomorrow. It's a process. It's unfortunately, this is, this is the whole, it's a, in its own scientific domain. And I am not asking you to understand everything, so it's not even necessary, but you need to understand the method and SIR model. You have no idea. They don't probably explain SIR model. Go and Google it. That's how really is the scientific paper is kind of composed. So I hope that would help. Um, great. Anyone else? One person, just two, who wants to speak about their experience and, and what they plan to do. You know, you can just vent also here. It's okay. If there is a, the last minute can be venting minutes. So who hasn't spoken this week? I would just force them. Kevin, yes, go on. Uh, hello, how are you doing? Um, this week's challenge is particularly challenging for me. I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> but uh, I, I come from like a technological background, and the start side <laughs> is always scary to me. Uh, so getting to face this challenge head on is a really great learning experience. And oh, I'm representing Team Kenya, and uh, I want to see us um, come through this week and finish it with a smile, and say we did it, man. Yeah. Uh, have a lovely Tuesday. Awesome, thanks. I think that's uh, one point is that for me, the most important thing is exposure. You get exposed next time, it's like a vaccine. Next time, you you're not gonna be afraid. Like you're not going to be, so it's, it's better to get exposed. And then next time you, you, know, you get the learning. So it's also, it's really think of it that way. That's really a great way. It's like, just, you probably never have to read mathematical papers. But once you see it, you kind of like, after that, you know, you know, one experience is kind of changed the entire thing. It's called the black swan. The black swan, if you have never seen, you know, in, 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 like let's say some, some uh, yellow elephant, 
just the appearance of one yellow elephant kind of makes your experience a lot more different than before. And this is exactly the same. So maybe you have never had to read research papers. But if so, this is your exposure. And you don't try to be expert in one exposure. The exposure is kind of to try to immune you for next trial. So it's kind of take it like that and get the, you know, the best you can. Just do the best you can. Try to, you know, just not stress too much and try to find a way around it for yourself. Like, okay, you know, I understand this. That's how they write. How can I understand? There are many blocks on each of these core key concepts. I probably will understand each of them from, I will read probably 10 blocks of each of these ideas and understand it. You know? So that's a kind of a way around. But you're yeah, kind of exposed. So I think that's, that's find an alternative that works for you. And this is an exposure. Um, so um, so Abla, Abla is saying, can you, Abla, just because like, you have a very good experience, probably that relates with everyone. Um, so could you maybe just say like, what your wrote also, and then just unmute him. Abla is a new tutor, she just, I think she finished her PhD uh, last year, and she has she had to go through probably all of this paper reading and getting and stuff. So it will be very good experience if you speak up, Abla. Maybe the mic is not working. If you are speaking, we can't hear you. I think it's mute, maybe. Hello. So we, we, we still can't hear you. We see, I see that you are now unmuted, but I can't hear you. Okay, the audio doesn't seem to work. So in the meantime, is there anyone else who just want to share their experience who haven't spoken before? Yeah, yeah, I think it, it's okay, yeah. Just I think your mic doesn't seem to work. Anyone else wants to share their experience? In particular, where they are, you know, where they are finding it okay, where they are, where they think they, they kind of are blocked. There is a discussion in Slack, which probably will help with uh, some people on a few topics. So you could just also check those threads. Okay, so it seems like everyone is clear or they, they kind of seem to be okay with. Uh, so let's continue the discussion then over Slack. So hello. if you want, hello, yeah. Good morning. Good hey, morning. Go on. Good morning. Oh, uh, actually, please, is it possible for the time uh, for this uh, interim? Is it possible to be extended a little, a little bit, please? I mean, if you have a case, just say. Because that. actually, uh, mm -hmm. ever since yesterday, I don't get the question at all because I just got the question today so I'm trying to find my way around I, I couldn't hear you is that was that can you hear me Manuel hello Good morning. I think he was asking. Can you hear me? Yes. 
okay, I think he was asking that can the time for the interim be extended, like can the submission today be extended? That he could not, that he just got an understanding of what he had to do this morning and he has not found a way around it. I think that's what he was asking. I, I mean, I think if you are hearing, if you have a special case, send it, but you know, the, the point of the interim report mostly is just to kind of get us some timeline on so that we can complete early. So we just make it Tuesday so that it gives you how much you should work from Monday to Tuesday. And then it kind of gives you that velocity um, such that you can kind of complete um, the, by the by Saturday, the kind of the, the complete one. So it's kind of, it's nothing more than just like try to do as much as you can at that time. Um, and the kind of, if you manage to do it, you'll most likely be able to finish the other one. So I think if you have a special case, definitely, you know, we're, we know that this is not, um, you know, not everyone has an ideal world. So a special case, just write it, but we'll consider on case by case uh, scenario. But I, it won't be extension because it's, well, for us, it's not, you know, the grading is just one part, which is we have to do because it, it, it needs to, you know, monitoring. And the most important that the tasks are done uh, in a certain way. Um, and imagine just we are in a company and someone is coming from behind us and we have to deliver. It's more like that. Just see it that way. At least I see it that way. But try to just get something and, and do it. And, and if you have a very special case, just write us. And I think we, we, are, we understand. Hope that is clear. Um, I think yes, okay, so we are over time, seven minutes, but if you have any, any more questions, just let's, um, yeah, okay, uh, Elvis. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Especially Prosper? Yes, I uh, I, yeah. Okay, uh, I had a suggestion for the CBAs. Uh, they, they are so important to us, uh, especially uh, seeing the fact that, uh, you know, most of us get uh, overwhelmed by the challenges. So I was suggesting uh, we can implement a method where maybe we have a tutorial as in um, a virtual meeting for the CBAs, maybe once a week, where we talk out and uh, we advise one another and we also encourage one another because, uh, okay, uh, when someone is working on the challenge, it's very rare that all of us get to see the the encouraging messages and and the paragraphs that Prosper sends to us about the CBS. So a virtual maybe forty minutes meeting will do good because some women some even don't see the texts about the CBS and they are important to us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question and the suggestion, sorry, I should say. I think it's a good thing to want to implement because um, I've noticed not everyone usually gets involved and I'm also finding ways to, to reach out to them, ask them to find out why and how. So I would, I would discuss that with the team and then maybe we can schedule one of the days in a week for our first virtual CBA. I hope that would yeah. work and help everyone. Yeah, that sounds very good. Great. So yeah, awesome, nice, and keep keep the good work. Just see it as a velocity instead of and uh, interim submission is more like you know try to just calibrate your velocity, arrive there, and kind of so that you can keep that momentum to arrive to Saturday without that much stress. So and yeah, uh, all the best and all the questions. Just forward them. And the tutors are there this week in particular. We have really a much more dedicated team, so leverage it, use it. So all right, the best to, yeah, go on, Prosper. Yeah, wait. So um, like I mentioned, I'm just dropping um, a frustration activity on Slack in our random platforms. So I will encourage all of us. I've seen all of us, 29 of us are online right now so let's all interact with the post that i'm sharing in a bit so we can get going all right great awesome bye everyone bye